Hi, this is Dina for Split Coast Stampers. In this tutorial, I'll share two different techniques for creating cloudy backgrounds, one using sponged ink and the other using watercolors. Generally, when I make cloudy backgrounds, this is the type of cloud that I'm thinking of. The puffy cumulus clouds with the bumpy tops, sort of pointed ends, and a pretty flat line across the bottom. I'm going to start with my sponge clouds, and for those, I use a scallop circle mask which is punched from heavy cardstock. This one is about a three inch circle and around the edge there are about three scallops per inch. Beginning at the top, I'm going to work from one side to the other in one inch segments. So here I'll be covering two to four scallops each time I sponge. I wanna create the puffy bumps on the top of the clouds. So for the next segment, I wanna rotate the circle up to create the upward side of the next bump and I'll sponge that in in the same upward motion. I also want to continue the scalloped line, so I'm also lining up that pattern as I go. To create the other side of the bump, I'll angle the circle down and sponge from the other side of the circle, again working over about an inch, and then that process is continued across the card to complete the row. And it doesn't matter if you work from left to right or from right to left, sometimes I even alternate back and forth. Once you've finished one row, you can move down the cardstock to create more cloudy layers across the card. The process is the same. The important thing to remember is that you need to vary the ups and downs so that each row is different and your clouds don't all go up and down in the same places. I'm going to move over to my sample project. So here I've got a stamped image from the cat's pajamas that I've masked with a post-it note. If you're very careful, you can work without a mask, but it's a nice safeguard, especially if you've already colored your image in. And I think the masking really helps add dimension to your scene as well, because your clouds can appear to be behind the stamped image. These Versa Magic Chalk Inks are great for sponging, and this is my favorite color to use for skies. This one is called Sea Breeze. So I just keep adding rows of clouds down to the bottom, and when I remove the mask, my little bunny pilot is in a cloudy sky. So here's the finished card. The tag pulls out, and it has a sentiment on it about finding joy in your journey. Two watercolor clouds, we're actually going to be coloring the patches of sky between the clouds. So remember the clouds that have bumpy tops and flat bottoms? To shape the clouds, our patches of blue are going to have bumpy bottoms and flat tops. So I start with a wedge of blue paint and I pull the paint out in a bumpy line at the bottom and then pull a straight line across the top and fill in between. On the other side, you'll wanna continue your cloud lines across so they appear to be behind the main image and not just to the sides of the main image. Again, you'll start with a wedge of color, extending it on the bottom with a bumpy line and then pulling from the top with a straight line. To avoid hard lines in your watercoloring here, you'll want to keep the front edge of the paint wet and moving forward, but if you're working in a small area like this, you should have time to jump from side to side to keep continuity in your picture. You've got this straight line here that will be the bottom of the next cloud up, so you can begin a new patch of color and repeat the process to make a new cloud. Again, the bumpy line creates the top of the cloud, and then the color pulled out in a straight line above it creates the bottom of another cloud above. So those really are the basics for creating clouds with watercolor. It's a little different way of thinking because you're actually working in the negative space around the clouds and creating them by coloring outside the lines. So if it's hard for you to visualize clouds and to work in negative space that way, you can lightly sketch in some cloud shapes before you start painting using the basic shape that I drew in the beginning of the video. One other detail I'd like to add to the sky are some light horizontal lines across the bottoms of the clouds. Clouds have a kind of shadow at the bottom, so this adds dimension to the clouds and it also breaks up the white space a little bit. I'm using the same color that I used for the sky, just with a little more water added in so the color is lighter. By the way, I'm using Core Paints here by Golden, and this color is called Cerulean Blue. Here's that panel on a finished card. I like giving stamped images a little scene to sit in. To me, it just adds so much to a card. 
Hopefully these simple steps will give you the courage to try this as well. And if you do, we hope you'll share your projects with us. Thank you so much for watching.